Hey guys, welcome back to Paracord Planet. A while back we made a video on how to make a globe knot, and we'll be doing that again today, but around a drawer pull instead. It's the same knot, but there's some different techniques and tricks that we'll use to make it tighten down correctly on such an unusual shape. So with that, let's dive in. So for this project, you're of course going to need a drawer pull. The closer to spherical shape it is, the better. This one's a little bit squished, and so we're going to have some problem points right around that ridge, but we'll get to that. And then I have 10 feet of paracord. You're not going to need all of that cord, but it's helpful to have a little bit of extra while you're tying the knot. The end knot is going to take about 5 feet. A fit is also going to help us out for doing that second row of the cord, because we'll add that in after it's halfway tightened down. And then of course we've got our scissors and a lighter, and with that, we're ready to get started. So we need to start by finding the middle of our cord. And then we're going to be wrapping it around a couple of fingers. So I'm just going to grab it with my bottom two fingers and we'll be wrapping it around our top two. In the last video we just wrapped it around one finger, but then that makes too small of a knot to fit around our drawer pull. So we want to go four times around. So this is our first one. Two, three, four. You should have four stripes across the front of your hand. I'm going to widen that up just a little bit more. And then with this end, we're going to be going back towards the other side. Then under, over, under, over. Just like that. And then with this cord that we started with, find the end of that one and we're going to be doing the opposite. We're going over the first cord, under the second, over the first, and under the last. Now we have these kind of two interlocking stripes, and on every stripe, one should be going over and the other should be going under. So now we're going to be taking this side, we'll find the end of that cord, and come back up here. And this time, we're going to do the same stripes as this one here. So this one goes under, so this one is two. We're just going to follow right alongside. So that's an under, over, under, over. And we'll just split those apart a little ways. Now we're going to do pretty much the same thing with our other cord the one that comes out on the bottom here. We'll be going back the other direction. And so right here, this cord goes over. So this one's going to go over as well. And under, over, under. Now this cord is going to go over the top of this cord as our two to the side of it go underneath. So we'll start by going under this one, this end loop, over the top of the next, under, over, and under. Pull that through. And now these two stripes on the bottom, we're going to be splitting those with our other cord. So the one that's way up on top here, that's going to be coming down to go over this end loop, and then under over, under, over. And then we're just going to catch that end loop and tuck it underneath that as well. Pull that slack through. Now we're down to the very last. We're going to flip our fingers over. And you notice that this stripe here and this stripe here are both doing the same thing. So we're going to split those as well and do the opposite pattern. So taking this cord from here, it's going to go over the top of our fingers to go over that first stripe, under the second, over the third, and out through the bottom of that fourth. So before I take it off my fingers, it looks like I missed one loop over here. 
this cord going through should go over the top of this and loop. So I'm just gonna pull that up through. So at this point we can take it off our fingers and it's gonna hold its shape. And we just kind of wanna squish it down this way as it's gonna be fitting over this knob shape. So we'll begin tightening it down and we mostly wanna take the slack away from this top portion. So we'll just kind of take some of those loops and feed them through until it comes out the bottom. And then we can worry about tightening down the bottom later. We don't want to tighten too much before having the knob in there, so I'm going to add that in now. You'll see that there's kind of this square pattern that should stay generally in the middle as we're tightening it down. But the globe knot is not a totally even knot, as you can see from our finished one. So there's no one point that should be in the middle necessarily. You just kind of have to keep an eye on making everything even. So we'll keep tightening down, starting to pull tight these bottom loops now. So we'll pull out the slack on those, feeding them through the knot. But don't tighten down all the way, because we still have another row to add. Once you get it tightened down about this far, just loosely over that knob, now we can add in that second layer. So you can take, you can do it with either side, it doesn't really matter. I often will take this left one and bring it just to the left of this one here. So I'll get that fit on, and we'll just begin weaving it through right alongside. So we just wanna follow whatever this cord does, we'll do with this one weaving right alongside it. So it'll go under, over, under, just like the one next to it. At this point, it's really easy to get twists in there, so we just want to be extra careful of that as we pull that through. So there we've added our second pass. Things are looking a little jumbled in places. They're really tight on this side, and they're loose enough to show through on this side. So we just kind of want to push our passes into the right place. This might involve some loosening, depending on how tight it was in the first place. But we, what we don't want is all of our cords sliding up to the top of the knob, because then we get it all jumbled up there, and we, right around the ridge, start to see some gaps through. So we just want to make sure it tightens down nice and evenly. And that's a little bit tricky to do sometimes, but it's good to get it in place before we actually do the tightening. Once that's a little bit more evened out, I like to tighten the, the cords going up and down on our knob before I tighten the lateral ones. And it's a little bit hard to guess sometimes, but when you're going through, if you're on a strand that goes mostly this direction, just tighten that loosely for now, because it's really easy for those to slip up towards the top or down towards the bottom. We want them to you know, sit right on that edge. So kind of like this strand here that goes down and back up, that's really gonna slide up towards the top, so we wanna be careful on how tight we tighten that row down. But this is kind of a long process as we have to go twice through the knot now to get all the extra slack out of there. But just pick an end and start pulling. So there it is after it's all tightened down. And it's not perfect. I think this one actually tightened a little bit more even. I don't see anything showing through on that blue one. There's the occasional little spot where I've got some wood showing through, but from the front, you're really not gonna notice it, and it looks pretty nice. So cutting the ends on this one is a little bit trickier because to melt them against, we wanna be careful not to scorch the wood around it. You can pull out the cord so that it's away from the wood. And then if you need to, you can even stick something in between there so you're not gonna mar your wood there. But we'll just melt those down pretty much like usual and flatten them against. If you really want to hide those ends, you can poke them through so that they're underneath the weave next to it. But there is our knob all done. Let's try it on and see how it looks. So globe knots are definitely not the only knot you can use for this. I've often seen monkey fist knots 
used as well in like natural fibers like sisal or jute. But I thought paracord lends a fun twist on that idea and brightens up a piece of furniture, especially for a kid's room. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and we'll try it for yourselves. If you've done something like this before, done any kind of knot on a knob, definitely let us know and post your pictures in our Pear Corner Facebook group. We'll put a link to that down in the description along with supplies like the Pear Cord and the Fid. Thanks for watching guys and we'll see you next time.